Right. And I think all three of you kind of share that it's really important to have that positive support network around you, no Absolutely. matter how it's formed or who's in it, as long as you have those people to fall back on and then they encourage you to just keep pushing forward because everybody gets setbacks, everybody has challenges, right? Yeah. But if you just kind of keep tackling it and chipping away at it, then eventually you're going to be successful on the other end of it, yep. right? I want to speak to that because earlier we were kind of having a like a sidebar and talking a bit about the idea of negative influences and, th right. and things that have happened that are you know maybe didn't go the way we wanted them to or hurt somewhere or somebody um, impacted us because they treated us in a way that helped us better define who we wanted to be because we could define ourselves against that. Right. So I feel like all of the experiences can be positive and can grow you. It really just depends on your perspective. So if you walk through your your career and your life with the perspective of, I'm going to take this, I'm going to grow, I'm going to be the best person I can be um, despite this or because of this, you know, it lights that fire. Um, it was like that F you, right? <laughs> You're like, oh, you said that? Let me show you. Um, I, was, uh, I was young and working for a big corporation and I sat down with uh, the VP, who happened to be a woman, and I said, you know, I, w I want it all. I want to have a family. I want to be at the top of my game. Um, and I, you know, I want to grow professionally. And he sa she said, she looked me straight in the eye and she said, you can't do that, you have to choose. What? And I leaned in on her table, this is 22 year old me. I was already like doing this. I leaned in on her table and I had a hot pink mohawk and I was like, watch me. So, Damn. I yeah. accept your challenge. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, challenge accepted for sure, yeah. Do you guys have similar? experiences that you want to share about maybe someone in your in your career that influenced you it could be positive or oh, negative so yes um, we were discussing about uh, influences in our life yep. that were female you know in our careers mm -hmm. and I couldn't really think of anything because I was focusing on a positive influence but the one remarkable influence that had that a woman had on me yes. in my career was that this person wanted me to be gone, basically. And it was a very negative, very catty, very, um, you know, that kind of relationship, yeah. yeah. So that changed me as a chef, as a person, because again, like we were speaking, it teaches us what not to be, yeah. how not to be. And, you know, when you step back and look at the big picture, it's like, this is a woman totally cutting down another woman. Right. You know, right. what are you doing? Right. Right. What are you thinking? Yes. So <laughs> it didn't make sense. I would never do that to another woman. Always trying to lift people up, you know. So that's what we're. That's our responsibility as yeah. leaders, yeah. as women. Absolutely. In any field, doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Amber, do you have? No, I mean, I think that generally speaking, my experience with that in the kitchen has been that, you know, male versus female, you have to hold yourself a different way as a female, and. You have to be a certain level of tough, and I find it always interesting that, you know, when you cross a certain line, it's something that maybe wouldn't be considered acceptable as a female versus as a male. And so that's always been something that I've struggled, struggled, not struggled with, but I've always kind of dealt with in my kitchens and places I've worked, and I think it's important that you do empower other women, and, and that's something that I'm a big advocate for. You know, I love to have female sous chefs and different chefs that work for me that I can show them that it's okay to be tough and stern, and it's acceptable, and if somebody else can't handle that, well, shame on them, because we all know that a male chef would do the same thing, and it would, you know, maybe somebody would turn a blind eye to it. So right. for me, I've never backed down from that, and, and it's very important to me personally. Absolutely. I think that's a it's a it's a good point because it doesn't again it doesn't really matter what sex they are, right? Like you need to be confident in yourself to be able to stand up. And there's a difference between being a jackass, right? Yeah. Yeah. And just being tough. Yeah. Right? There there's language differences, there's body position differences, there's eye contact differences, right? Like and that 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 line I think is blurred a lot of the times, yes. right? Where where being a jackass is the cool thing to do, but that it's actually not in any case, in any state, in any matter, in any position, in anything that you do in your life, right? Yeah. You treat the other human being with respect, period. Like, yes. there's no more if ands, or buts about it, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, let me throw another question out at you guys. Let's see here. Why don't we do... If you could go back 10 years and go find yourself 10 years ago, what advice would you give yourself knowing the journey ahead of you? 
We gotta I, take her. No. Ah! So we knew that was gonna happen. Yeah. If I could go back ten years, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it would. T I would tell myself not to be such a hothead. I felt like I had so much to prove, you know, and especially working in Michelin star rated restaurants yeah. in the beginning, um, it's very tough. And you're getting the hot pans thrown at you. And if your uh, chives were cut just this far, you know, too much, the whole thing was getting tossed out. Right. You know, so it was right. really hardcore. So I had to be very hardcore, you know. But once you enter, you know, the, the real world, right. you got to chill out. Right. You can't throw leg sands across the kitchen like you used to, you know. Right. So, yeah. Absolutely. That's basically it. It takes, it ta right, it takes, it takes that, it takes a little bit of maturity, yes. right? Yeah. And being self-aware. Right. To be able to start making those fundamental changes in yourself. Yes. You know Always what I mean? Always looking at your career peripherally, mm -hmm. you know, as a whole. Where do I go one year, two years, five right. years from now? Where do I want to be? Where do I want to be? Yeah. yeah. Don't just float around, Always, right? right. So we're not Hawaii, although I wish we were. Um, <laughs> Amber, what about yeah. you? Um, I think for me personally, what I would say is, you know, I wouldn't necessarily change anything because then I wouldn't be who I am and, and where I am today. Yeah. But I think that for me, what I would tell myself back then is, is like Chef was saying, you know, don't be as reactionary. So, you know, it's, I feel like you always, you have, always have something to prove and I always, and I, I've always felt like as a female too, you have something else to prove, you nice. know, especially for me, I've been lucky in my career to work in France and when I worked in France, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a French, I'm in another country where French is the second language yeah. and then, you know, French men don't like to, men don't like to be told what to do in general, I find, but, right. uh, you know, and then you have a French man and he really doesn't like to be told what to do in general and um, so, you know, you have to, tread those waters lightly mm -hmm. but at the same time I would just tell myself you know try to try to soak it in and maybe not be as reactionary I think yeah good advice yes. it's definitely good advice it's hard to learn though yes you yeah. have to, and you have to practice this one yeah right it's not like something you can pick up like automatically especially when you're driven yeah a driven female and you have your own moral code that you're yeah. following right and you have a certain level of standards that you keep yourself at and you expect everybody else around you to be at that same level, right, right. just automatically, mm -hmm. it takes some time to learn that that's, yeah. that's not the truth, right? Like, yeah. you've got that inside yourself, 100%, yeah. and you need to, like, leverage that mofo as much as you possibly can, yeah. right? Yeah. But then projecting that on someone else is just as bad as someone being a jackass, right? Right, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. it's kind of the, it's the, it's the same thing, just pa packaged differently, yes. you know what I mean? What about, yeah. Cece, what about you? Uh, if I could go back 10 years, I'd tell myself that it's harder than I even thought. <laughs> yeah, it is much harder. <laughs> yeah, just hang in there. It'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> more is going to fly at you than you ever expected. Um, but that it's, that it's more worthwhile than you could have ever imagined. So the reward on the other side of the effort and the work and the, you know, the 100 hour weeks and the burning the bottom of my pregnant belly on the grill and like all of that, <laughs> that, yeah, that, that was real, <laughs> but I was huge. Um, yeah, but you know, all of that was worth it. Yeah. All of it's worth it because we're sitting here right now. We get to share our journey with other people. Yes. Um, and, and there's still those days. Like, I mean, there's still 18 hour days. There's still like, you know, sleepless nights. There's still moments that, you know, that this idea fails and that all those things are okay. It's part of the process. So I think that also just comes with being older. Like that, that perspective, yeah. you know, I'm so, we were talking about it. Like, I'm so grateful to be in my forties. Like, thank you. Yes. Like, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing, so right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yay. Our first one, we're gonna yeah. count. Yeah. Okay, great, all right, start count, great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is not the first time this has happened in my life. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, no, the banter's good, the banter's okay. good. No, it's true, it's true. Um, I don't even know how to answer that question because I would I would probably take some of each one of yours. Um, Ten years ago, I probably would have said fight a lot fucking harder, personally, with me and where I was. Right? Mm -hmm. um, don't just listen and absorb and do what others say. Be confident enough in your own vision and your own drive and ability to be able to bring something to life even bigger and better and better. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that I think that women, especially having a daughter that's 16, right? I think women in general just struggle with that innately most of the time, right? Like to have their own self confidence and self worth, yes. right? Like building that self worth and being 
and just being uh, you know, relentless with it, mm -hmm. just relentless, you know? Yes. And again, there's a difference between, between being a jerk, yeah. right? And just being positive and focused and driven, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and that gets, those, those lines get, get muddied. They really do. They do get muddied. I, I think they get muddied, especially for women. Yeah. I think they get muddied in a way that's very different for women because if we have moments of being reactive, if we're the ones throwing a pan at somebody or a Lexan, if we're the ones yelling in a kitchen, yeah. then we're labeled differently yes, and we're absolutely. emotional really? and we're bitches yes. and we're all these things that are these negative ideas of what women are and why, like examples of why they shouldn't be in this field or in a position of power or in a position of leadership. So I think that, I think they're, is a change in the culture that's happening where there's more grace, but I think that we're going into it with our eyes open, knowing that we have to hold ourselves to a different standard so that we can kind of shut those ideas about who we are because we're women down. Right. I don't know if you guys have that experience, but like I work really hard to have a culture in my restaurant space where that's just not part of the discussion. Like it does, it's not about me being a female owner or a female chef. It's just about me getting in there and putting my head down and getting the work done and removing obstacles for my team right. and like allowing them to be their best in this space. Right. That's what it's about. And if, if I have to motivate somebody in a particular way on a particular day, well, that's what that's about. Absolutely. It's not about me being a bitch. It's, it's about me getting the job done. It's about me helping you. It's which about you being a chef. Mm -hmm. It's about me being a chef. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, chef. And that's okay. <laughs> You have, either one of you want to continue that thread? That's a great thread. I think there's, I mean, right? There's. I think in our industry, you know, it can be difficult because I want to be unapologetic about, about situations like that, you know? I'm a chef. I'm here to run a kitchen. I'm here to run a business. I'm here to do the best by my staff and the best by the food and the best by the owners and the investors or whoever, whomever it is. And I think that line, you know, as long as you're respectful and you're tactful, and you do keep in mind that, you know, it's not about being female or male. Yes. At the end of the day, you're a chef, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that however other people on the other side of that maybe perceive that is what can be difficult because you can't control the other people. Mm -hmm. right. And so for me, when I'm in those moments, I'm just trying to remind myself, I'm a chef, you know, this is this is priority number one. And, and that's what I encourage my staff to do too. You know, it's right. act with integrity, make the right choice whether or not anybody else is around or anybody is going to recognize it or anybody is going to call it out because that's the right thing to do and and you know it's just it's 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 a it's a heavy topic for sure i think it, it is know. it is yeah absolutely yeah i think i'd like to piggyback on what you had just said it's about being a chef it's about honing your own skills and not be so concerned about the sex factor right. it is there of course yeah. and it is prevalent and um, but, you know, to take focus off of that, again, that's a negative thing. I just always turn it back to myself right. and try to, you know, develop myself. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, you know, tell my ladies what, you Absolutely. know, that's what they should do. Absolutely. Is to focus on themselves and not be so concerned about how they're being negatively affected. Yeah. 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 Okay. Since you got the mic, give us, give us a story of when you took one of your protégés and lifted them up. Oh, gosh. Okay, so right off the bat, um, when I worked at the Cosmopolitan, I was a, a chef de cuisine there um, at the Henry. Um, I had a young lady, her, her name is Anna, mm -hmm. Anna Reyes, and she was one of my cooks. She was in Garmerche on the line. It was a tough line because we did like 1,200 covers for breakfast. Ooh. We did 900 <laughs> covers for like, well, maybe like 900 to 1,000 for lunch. 500 for dinner, and then graveyard, we did about 12 to 1,500 covers. Holy moly. So it's a tough kitchen, right? Just a... Yeah, just a hair. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> so she always did such a wonderful job and such attention to detail, you know? I paid a lot of attention to her, just like the rest of my cooks, yeah. but I saw something in her for sure that I could develop, you know? And it was more developing of her confidence. She was in the culinary union. She took um, psalm classes, mm -hmm. sommelier classes. Wow. You know, she's always constantly bettering herself. Yep. Well, ended up like two, three years later, she moved on to different venues, you know, getting her experience yep. elsewhere, yep. Uh, moving on from a cook. Um, she ended up uh, being the executive chef of the Asian Boathouse in uh, Sonoma. 
and then she came back to Vegas and opened the new one in Palace Station. Wow. Yeah. That's so I was really proud story. of her, you know. She made me cry a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah, so. Oh my gosh, what an Super incredible proud. story. Mm -hmm. That's an incredible story. Amber, Stacey, you got yeah. it? Yeah. 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 I mean, so. I'm sure you, I'm sure we all have like <laughs> gazillions, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My experience is different because I don't get to grow people on the line so much as I do, um, you know, I get to grow people in life in general. Mm -hmm. uh, my kitchen is, you know, short order cooks or a diner. It's just, it's a different gig. Most of my cooks have been with me for like 10 years. So we kind of have this space where everything sort of stays the same. It's different. It's mom and pop, right? Yep, yep. Um, but the exciting thing is, is I have um, a kid named Dom. He's not a kid. He's a grown man. But <laughs> still, he feels like he's like 18 and still a brand new host with me. And he came, he worked with me for quite some time and then ended up becoming a paramedic but he was really called to become a chef yeah. and so he left he went to CIA and like he's traveling all over the world still learning about food and he's he's just really like diving into his passion and mm -hmm. watching him dive into his passion and just be so excited about it is so much fun for me like right. it is it just it mm -hmm. just like it gives me the chills yeah. and he'll come back and he'll visit and he'll be like thanks Stace I'm like oh thanks Dom you know like thank you like mm -hmm. that inspires me yeah. you mm -hmm. know so yes yeah Absolutely. Yes. So I don't. Uh, I don't have any big grand grand ones like that. But I have yes. one. I don't have one yes. yet. Well, she's. <laughs> let's just say she's in the works. So uh, one of my sous chefs when I started at my last shop was amazing and and super talented and had great skills. But she didn't have the confidence because the chef before me didn't didn't give her that. Didn't give her the the power to have a voice and to really kind of be who she is and, and own that and fall into that role. And so, um, you know, I worked with her for two years and and I just watched her kind of grow. And, and, you know, through time, I would have those little moments in the kitchen where, you know, I would see her coaching somebody or, or teaching somebody something or taking ownership or, you know, just doing the right thing and, and leading. And, and nothing made me more excited than to see that. And, and in my new role, I've promoted her and she's come with me and, she just she just owns it now and she's young and she's female and I just love you know I love that and and she's not as scared you know when I first met her she was she was so scared you know she said chef you know I think I think the guys don't want to listen to me because I'm a female and this and that and I said forget that you know like just be a chef you know let, let me teach you these skills and and own those skills and and focus on yourself and and you know, as chefs, I think it's difficult too. You know, as you become a sous chef, an exec sous chef, an exec chef, an owner, you think you always have to have the answer. You know, for me, when I had my first exec chef job, I was also very young, and and I was so scared because I didn't want to have somebody ask me a question that I didn't know the answer to, because I was I was always like, am I ready? You know. But I think as chefs, that's you know, just like any other career or profession, you have to continue to invest in yourself and grow yourself in order to stay relevant in our industry. And so, you know. It's really exciting now to see her in this role where, you know, it's like she's my second and if I'm not around, I trust her to run the business, to run my kitchen, to coach my staff and and she's young and I love that because she's she's really just from one person having that impact on her, she's really strong now and I'm just so excited to see what she'll do in the future, you know? Very excited. Absolutely. Yeah. So what that that really is a great segue into kind of my next question, which is how in your positions and what you're doing, your experiences, what advice can we throw out to the audience on how to instill that? What are those qualities that need to be brought out? What are those things that you identify in those diamonds and roughs, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're like, oh, I, I, I see that one. I see you, I see you over there, right? Like, and encouraging that to come out. What do you do? Like, how do you make it happen with those people? I think, you know, what I would tell young uh, culinarians, male or female, doesn't matter. Um, and I said it in that article, um, is that, you know, to be reflective upon yourself and where you're at in your career and personal life because it affects everything, you know. So, and always to like look forward into the future and make mile markers, goals, you know, set goals for yourself. Where do you want to be professionally? Where do you want to be at your skill level personally, etc. cetera. Um, life throws crazy curveballs, right? Yeah. So, so things, you have to be flexible. But to have this guidance of you know what you have thought about and set forth for yourself, right, 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 it kind of yeah. helps you stay focused, right? Yeah, because stay I mean, things, focused. Things get like constantly, right. and you're just like, wow, what do I do? But if yeah, you, you have to have some type of focus. Yeah, you know, yeah. and uh, 
Yeah, that's one thing. I could go on. But Keep going. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is at the end of the day, reminding ourselves that this is the hospitality industry. And we're in the business as much of, you know, the food part that I love. And that's what, you know, you know, brings me life every day is food in any capacity. Yeah. It's really that we're a people driven business. So, you know, the company I work for now, 5050 Restaurant Group, you know, they have this, this strategy where it's 49% and 51%. So the 49% is what you know, your skills, where you've come from, what you've learned. And the 51% has to do with the people aspect and that part matters more. So if you've got the 51% and you can really be a people person, you know, it's about investing in your people because at the end of the day, if you don't invest in your people, you know, and you're just taxing, you're taking withdrawals and withdrawals, they're not going to grow and, and and it's going to be a problem for future for our industry to come in the future. And so I think it's just really important that it's a it's a main focus for our industry is that we're people driven and we need to hang on to and promote and invest in those people that really, really care and they have that passion. And, and that's really important to me. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a great it's an absolutely great point. Right. It's a, it's a service industry. Yeah. Yes. Right. We're serving people. And we're serving people, right? But you know, like, why aren't we treating the people we're serving the same with the ones that we're working with, right? Like, that should be we should yeah. be equally it on should be the same, same side, it right? Should like, be the same. there shouldn't be any difference yes. when that wall in a kitchen yeah. or a server, like, none of that. It shouldn't matter, right? Like, you're being polite to your guests. You should also be polite to your team, right? Encourage them and grow them. Yeah. Stacey, you got any? Yeah, no, I think it's yeah, really about like too. internal customers, mm -hmm. right? So we're we're taking care of the people that work for us as if they're also a customer. I like to talk about it as mentoring, right? Like, you know, we can provide mentorship amongst each other and it's a two-way street. I always talk to my, my family is what I call them, really. They're not just my staff, like they're people that matter in my lives deeply. And we talk a lot about, you know, the idea that we're going to learn and grow from each other. Like their lessons, the ones that they can impart on me when I can stop talking and start listening and really become part of their life. Right. Those are the lessons that matter. Those are the things that grow both of us so that we can, you know, we can all get better. So like, you know, the, the saying goes like a rising tide raises all ships. Like yep. that's true. Yep. Yep. So if yep. we can grow together, we can stay together, we can keep doing new things and, and just really, um, I don't know, creating fun stuff. <laughs> but um, one of the other things I was going to say, is that um, besides mentorship, I think that it's important to stay curious. Yeah. I think that curiosity yeah. is a driving force, it's both you know for myself, but I also want to impart that in my team. Like, don't just do things. Ask why you're doing it. Know where your motivation comes from. Find something new. Find right. something to get excited about. Find something to go learn about. Do you need to go take a trip because you want to go and learn? You know, you want to learn about another you know style of cooking. You want to learn about a different culture. Go, go grow. Um, and come back and we'll all be better for it. So curiosity is key for me. Knowledge yeah. is power, right? Yeah. Knowledge is power. It yeah. really is, it really is. Yeah. So all right, I'm gonna get, we're gonna give a, a fun one here. Well, they've all been fun, hopefully. <laughs> but if I can actually get to my phone. I can't really feel my thighs right now. I know. Oh, man, I'm water. It's all good, That's okay. it's all good, <laughs> don't worry about it. Thank you. All right, so let's do this one. Give me, Straight up, right? Straight up. What is the most difficult part about being a woman in the culinary and hospitality industry? And on top of that, so state like what's the most difficult thing? And then how do you overcome that challenge? I feel like the most difficult thing about being a woman in the culinary industry is that we are constantly um, trying to overcompensate, you know, in skill, in voice, in you know, strength, like physical strength, you know. Why do you think that is? Because we're trying to... Break that mold? Well, we're trying to be as good, if not better, than our male counterparts, mm -hmm. you know. And even when we are better, or we're doing, we're working harder, etc., it's still looked down upon to a degree, you know. They're like, ah, oh, she's trying so hard, blah, 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 you know. So there's always some type of negative, you know, backlash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, How do you overcome that? overcome it, just block it out. Yeah. yeah, stay focused. You know, that's why it's been so important in my career just not to give a fuck what anyone says. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and just focus on what I have to do. And, uh, you know, it's proven to work out pretty well. So, 
you know, that's what we have to do as women. Yeah, absolutely, so. absolutely. Ladies, which one? Um, I think that for me, the the hardest part about being a female in our industry is that the first thing that people notice about you is that you're female. So, like I was saying earlier, I don't want to be seen as female. I want to be seen as a chef. So, you know, I think the best way to overcome that is it's it's a fine line. You know, you you try to overcompensate and you want to kind of hold your own, but you also don't want to be seen as trying too hard. And so I think at the end of the day, you know, I just try to focus, okay, I'm a chef, you know, screw the rest. If today I need to be more stern, then I'm going to be more stern and other people are going to perceive that as, ho as ho however they want. Right. But uh, I'm a chef first and foremost. And so right. I think that's probably one of the hardest parts about being a female. And then when you're a younger chef, there's, there's a million other obstacles as you grow up in the kitchen because I just think about people like, you know, my sous chef Megan and, and you know, how many chefs before her were there? How many cooks or great, talented people were shut down and didn't get to go down a different road because right. they didn't have that person that really had their back and grew them and invested in them. It's, it's just so important and, you know, it's just, you know, endless. You know, the conversation is endless for me with that. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think for me, the hardest thing about being a female chef is that um, I don't always remember to think about the unique thing that I can bring to whatever space I'm in because I am a woman. Like there is something different that we can offer because of that because you know I feel like I'm more nurturing because I feel like I'm a better communicator because 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 so I think I don't often give myself enough space and credit for that because the fight is so real yes. right and I'm lucky in that I have I have my own restaurant now so I don't I don't have to fight so hard mm -hmm. I do have to fight with guests though. Even just two weeks ago, I was like, no sir, I'm not the host, I'm the owner. Um, <laughs> that was a good one. Um, <laughs> Those are deep breath moments. Oh girl. <sighs> that was, yeah. I had to put myself on timeout. <laughs> Went and cooked on the line. Actually, that's my therapy. I'm like, move, I just, I need to get in here real quick. Just, <sighs> like, yeah, I'm literally like, I'll be at saute. Just leave me alone. Um, <laughs> so, um, that, but that for me is a big thing. Like, right, like that, that reminder, like that, I bring something different and special because I'm a woman yeah. and I want to celebrate that and I don't want to hide it and I'll yeah. cook on the line in heels yeah I will yeah don't care yeah I have makeup on today I got my lashes done yeah. I don't give a fuck Nail you polish. think whatever you want girl I got my nails done <laughs> why because I'm not actually gonna be on the line because this would not last more than a day <laughs> I'd be like, oh. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> just too long <laughs> <laughs> but that's the other thing, though. Like, sometimes I want to, like, celebrate my femininity. Yeah. I want to, like, I want to Absolutely. be a woman yeah. in this space. And I don't want that to get in the way of how I'm working or how I'm being perceived yeah. or what your thoughts are about, like, oh, I can't, I can't show up like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? And run a line. I'm sure yeah. people have said some things. Like, yeah. there's some pictures of me in red heels. Yeah, actually, I cook in those. Fuck off. Yeah. Like, it's a real life thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... I like that. I want to yeah. celebrate that. I don't want to hide that. Like, yeah. I want to be a lady on the line. Yeah. Yes, that's me. I'm here. Yeah. I hope you don't have a problem. I don't. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, what, what can we so, do? So uh, let's keep this going. Like, what yeah. can we do to help encourage others to celebrate themselves as way in their own comfortable way, right? Like, what would you guys do? I think you're doing it, right? You're growing people. Showing them. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah. I, I think it's, sorry. I think it's, I think it's hard because, you know, for me, I take all of the experiences I've had and all the great chefs that I've you know, been lucky enough to work for, and I take from them the pieces that I loved and I avoid the pieces that I didn't love. You know? So I wanna be the best that I can be as a leader. And I just think that you know, the generation that's behind us, they don't have the same work ethic. And so you know, it's really hard. I'll get these cooks and they're like, well, I'm at eight hours or you know, let me get a break. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about right now? You know, like, show me that you want to be here, you know? Like, it's a privilege to be a leader, and it's a privilege to be a female leader. And so, you know, for me, I just try to do my best every day to make sure that not only am I learning something myself in the day, but that I'm teaching something. Because teaching is such an important part to me as a chef, because 
I can't tell you how many chefs I worked for that never wanted to teach me about a P&L or what, never wanted to teach me about the financial side or, or never, you know, they're like, go in the kitchen, you know, and it's like, I'm sorry, I, I don't know everything with food. I know a lot, but I don't know everything. And it's like, I want a moment to learn that side of things. And so I, you know, when I have sous chefs and you know, exec sous chefs or line cooks, like I want to teach them all how to do all aspects of my job because I want to give them knowledge, you know, knowledge is power. And I, and because the generation behind us has such a, a lack of work ethic sometimes and just doesn't understand, you know, doesn't understand what it's like to stand outside, you know, like I wanted a job so bad at Alinea and everybody laughed at me and they're like, you're never going to get a job there. I went there in the middle of a blizzard and I stood outside and every day the line cooks would come in and Chef Grant would get there and they would all laugh at me and I was like, I'm not leaving until you give me a job. So I'll be here in the morning before you get here and I'll be here in the night until you leave. And I did that for a full week. And then on, on the last day, Chef Grant said, okay, come back on Monday with your knives. And then I got to go in there and tell all those cooks like, you know, this is what it looks like to, to really feel passionate about something and want something. Yeah. And, and it's important to me to try to instill right. that, yeah. you know, because I just feel like it's it's really lacking. And so to share that and, and help, you know, rub off a little bit and have an impact on cooks and, you know, just people in general is really special. Yeah. Absolutely. Tran, you were going to... I'm good. You sure? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you were saying, what do you do, right? Like, what do you, what advice do you give people? And yeah. that's, that, that's the story, right? tenacity you have to be tenacious you have to be yeah. persistent you have to believe in yourself a hundred times more than anybody else does yeah. like you are your own hero you have to remind yourself you have to have great self-talk you have to know that this is where you want to be right you have to, it's you have to be unflappable right. in the face of all things yep. yeah. and then anything is possible but you have to have that burning desire and that knowledge that this is where you're meant to be, this is what you're meant to do. And I think that anybody who's hit like this level has that. You have to, yeah. or you wouldn't have survived the path. Like there's no way you wouldn't have survived yeah, a blizzard no. for a week. Yeah. I read that and I was like, she's a badass. <laughs> I like, can't wait to meet her. <laughs> That's such a great story. Sorry. It's, no, it's a good, it's a good one. It's it's yeah. it is. It's a difficult balance. And essentially, what's happening in this in this this time in place, right? Is that we are the mold has been the female male mold, right? Has always had stigmas, right? So we're fighting against those stigmas and we're breaking those walls down and we're making it more equal and neutral across the board where it's more about skill set. It's more about being a good human being. It's more about, you know, showing that you care and being vulnerable to others and lifting them up and leading them, you know? And yeah, you get beat up once in a while doing that. It's just, yeah. it's great. Right? That's part of the, that's part of the responsibility of stepping up as a female leader, right? Yes. Is that you're gonna get smacked down, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, right? But don't let that affect you long term, right? Because it's like a, it's like a, just a little, it's just festers, right? Like if you don't let those things go, um, and then you're not confident in who you are, then the advice that I would give the females around the world is just make sure you know who you are. So yeah. time out for a minute, right? Mm -hmm. If you're questioning this and you're doubting it on your own, right? then maybe you haven't really chosen the path you want to go down yet, mm -hmm. which is okay, mm -hmm. it's yeah. totally okay. Um, but think about it, right? Like look at your surroundings, look at the things you do. Um, I think that technology is a blessing and a curse at the same time because it, it exaggerates everything in the world. Whereas instead of kind of being close knit with your friends, yeah. you know, going out in certain areas and staying kind of in that community environment, mm -hmm. which that community then ends up raising you, right? Yes. Um, now you have the world participating in opinions and doubts yeah. and positivity and negativity, and it's yeah. all thrown at you at once in such a fast pace. Yeah. And you're expected to uptake so quickly that you lose the beauty of life yes. happening around you and enjoying the person that you evolved into, yeah. right? Like we evolve our entire lives from start to finish. Yeah. And it's it's you know it's an, it's just an incredible incredible thing to, to self realize and understand. Um, do you guys have a moment in in your careers that was a was a pivotal shift? Like you had one of those like aha moments where you're like, all right, I know I know what I'm gonna do now. I know which direction I'm gonna go. I'll take this. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I've been an entrepreneur like the beginning of my career and then now at the tail end. In between, I did like 13 years or 15 years in a bunch of hotels, restaurants, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I was the executive chef of banquets at the Fairmont. 
I was working 18 hours a day, seven days a week for like months, okay? We won't say why, but it was happening. Right. And um, I had an aha moment that, you know, I felt like I needed to get back to myself and do what was right for me as opposed to continuing to work for others and making them millions and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, and just focusing on myself again. Right. Why? Because I landed in the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't do it, you know? Yeah. And it was also another realization that, hey, I'm like 42. I was 42 or 43. No, 42 or 41 back then. Mm-hmm. Your body can't do that anymore. From the time I was like 30 till then, impossible. I couldn't do the same thing. Right. So I had to do like a little change, a little change up in my career. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. You guys have any aha moments? Yeah, you had an aha moment? I had an aha moment too, and I also had it because I, you know, I was working 100 hour weeks and uh, I was pregnant and I almost lost my daughter. Oh. And um, oh and then a year later, I had a similar situation before she was one year old. And I really had to like kind of take stock of my life and what I was doing and what it meant and how I was spending my time and, and really like think, do I want to see my daughter grow up and my son grow up or do I want to you know, keep doing things the same way. So I had to kind of like check myself and decide to work smarter and yeah. to trust people and to grow them and to delegate, you know, in a way that was more efficient. And um, I don't know if it had anything to do with being a woman, just being human and saying like, this no, that's, is, that's thing, yeah, though. this is what I want in my life and this is what I don't want in my life and kind of creating some boundaries. And yeah. um, that was a that was a really important time. And there are, you know, rules that I carry with me from then, you know, like when I work, I work. I work until I need to come home. And then when I'm home, I'm home. And I only work at home if my kids aren't home because they need me. Like I'm never going to get that time back with them. Not ever. Like me working harder is not going to enrich our life in a way that ultimately matters to me. It's not centered with my values when it comes to our home life. Absolutely. So you were saying earlier, one of the things we're talking about was, you know, what, uh, you know, what's the biggest challenge? The biggest challenge for me really is being a mother and you know also being a chef owner like doing these two things like i'm I'm kind of like the mom of the trails like i'm got 30 employees that i'm growing and knowing and you know caring for and and i have my two at home too so it's it's a balance it's and everything it never feels quite right like sometimes i feel like i'm working too much then i'm like oh god maybe i should be at home more and like oh this kid needs something and it's you know it's a dance that we do i always have a a bunch of balls in the air but i'll tell you what like i wouldn't want it any other way i love the life i have like i i'm so grateful every day that i'm part of this industry absolutely every day absolutely yeah aha moments I, I don't have a big one. Like have a that. big one? Not yet. No. <laughs> don't yeah, get not that. Yet, not, not yet. One. All right. So <laughs> not then, that one. So yeah. then, <laughs> bra. So then, what is the best thing about being a female in this industry? Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't gonna forever okay, stay in my memories. I know. Right? I'm like, like, yeah. I feel okay. like I keep getting too close. And it's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the best thing. Snort three. Stop. <laughs> Okay, so I think the best thing about being a female in the industry is that once you have achieved a certain level, it is super gratifying, you know. You have overcome so many obstacles, and like she was saying, like Chef was saying, we don't give ourselves enough credit sometimes. We need to step back and look at our path and say, wow, I did that, I did that. People tell me to do that all the time, you know. And um, again, you know, it's nice to have that support system. People putting you in check, telling you what you should and should be doing, you know, for your best interest, (laughs) you know? It's like, give yourself some credit, you know? But yeah, I think that's pretty important. Absolutely. It is. Best thing, best thing. Best thing. Best thing. Um, I think the best thing about being a female chef in this industry, or just being a chef in general, is the camaraderie. Honestly, yeah. like that, that thing, that moment in time where you like, you know, you clear a rack, you know, you're done with all the tickets, you like, you know, you start cleaning, but like really you feel really good because the day is over, you know, you give each other a high five, whatever it is. I, I think there's that thing and there's something about like meeting other chefs and you just, you like meet each other and you know, there's yeah. this feeling. Instant. It's yes. an instant yeah. bond and instant yeah. level of respect. Yeah. And 
um, for me, I think that is my, you know, my favorite part of the whole thing. Awesome. Just the camaraderie. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yammer? Um, yeah. It's tough. I'm I'm super competitive. I like to compete. So I think that probably for me, I'd say the best part about being female in this industry is showing showing a man what's up. <laughs> but, but if I have to give the niche, yeah, uh, you know, uh, female power. But if I have to give another answer, a more realistic answer, I would just say, you know, just just knowing that you know this is what you're made to do and this is what you love to do and. You know, it is hard to work the way we work, just like any chef, male or female. But knowing that you love it, and like I said, I really feel like it's a privilege to be a leader. And so I have a hard time reflecting and, and you know, saying, hey, I did do this and I did do that because I'm always, you know, I'm a perfectionist. I'm always next, looking next, for more and what's right, next right, and yep, what's more, yep, you know, and, yep. and all those things. So I think for me to, to take a moment and, and think about all those things and say, hey, you know, I've been really lucky to work for this chef or to, to, to have this experience. It was the hardest ass experience, <laughs> but I was lucky to have it, you know, and to be grateful for those moments because they shape you to who you are. And, you know, when you finally get to a point where, you know, you get into your 30s and you start to feel more confident about who you are and, and your path and, and all of that, I think, uh, is really special, you know. Absolutely. So we're getting we're getting close to being um, going to wind down, but I want I want really wanted one last question, which was um, and take your time, right? Like, I am so honored and blessed to have you ladies here with me today and us talking about all of this because it's an important subject matter, and I think that your voices need to continue to be heard and the stories need to continue to be shared because that is how you change cultures is by telling stories, right? If you lose those stories, the culture will remain the same. If you share those stories, right? it will start to evolve on its own. So what is the one thing that you really want to make sure someone takes away from today's panel and having the amazing brain power and talent sitting here for them to use now or potentially even in the future? It's a tough one. It's a tough question. I think it is the utmost importance for people not to give up. Yeah. Do not give up. You have a vision, you have a goal, you have a dream. Just don't give up. Be persistent about where you want to be, who you want to be, because it is totally possible. If I can do what I've done, I, anybody could do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I think that also another strong message for other females is to lift other females. Yeah. We need to support each other, you know? We support everybody around us, but yep. yeah. Don't be dogging the bitch, you know? Right, no, Sorry. absolutely. <laughs> no, it's true. It's, it's true, true, right? It's true. Because you see it every kitchen you go to. I've seen it in every kitchen I've worked at. And I've always wondered, why are we not supporting one another, you know? Right. Why aren't we trying to better and each together. other? And yes. together. Yes. And together, right? Yeah, yes. exactly. Stronger in numbers. So I, I think that's really <laughs> important for young ladies to try to do. It's a great point. Yeah. It's a great point. Yeah. <laughs> There's always this like, who's going to go next? What are we going to do? <laughs> um, uh, I think that the, the most important thing um, to take away is that we have to, or I would suggest um, finding mentorship and also mentoring um, yeah. people along the way because I think you get something out of both sides. There's all this learning to be had. Um, and also trust your inner voice, right? Like your gut knows, your yeah. gut knows where you should be, where you shouldn't be, what should be happening. Like you have, like you have this inner voice, and you know if you trust that, you can get through just about anything. Um, but I also think mentorship is critical because you have to have a support system um, in order to get to where you want to be. So yeah, no, absolutely, it's great point. I love that. Um, we should do that again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think probably the biggest thing I would say is to stay, you know, follow your inner voice, but stay true to who you are as well, because, you know, the people you surround yourself with and the workplace that you're in, you know, it has a great influence on you. So stay true to who you are and what you want. Um, and also take, take some risks, you know? It's like, yeah. I find myself scared of certain things and you know, and I'm like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. It's like, so, you know, it's like self-inflicted pain. Like, I don't want to get on the roller coaster because I'm terrified of roller coasters. But, but shit, let's do it. Yep. You know, and yep. so I think it's important to take a risk and 
and um, to know that the sky is the limit, you know, it's it's a crazy world and and you can do anything you want to do as long as you're willing to put in the time and the work. And I think if you're hardworking, you know, and creative, you can do whatever you want in this world and, and you should. So um, I think that's that's probably my biggest thing. Yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely. Um, I think the, the probably the one thing that I would share, which I would have loved when I was younger, is that failure is okay. Yes. It's okay to fail. It's totally okay to fail, you know, um, because you're learning what you want to do, right? And you're yeah. learning that, you know, like if you fail at something and you try again and you fail again and you try again, right? Like, it, it, and look at your feelings around that. Is it really something that your your heart and soul is into it? Because there's a reason why you keep failing at something yeah. you want to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or do you really just not want to do it, right? Because yeah. it's being implanted by somebody else or there's cultural pressure, or the kitchen pressure, or whatever the stigmas are out there, you know? Um, and that's how you learn and that's how you form who you are, right? Like I encourage my daughter consistently, just try it, just try it. I don't care if you like it or not, just try it, right? Mm -hmm you'll know then that you like it or don't like yeah. it. And then that will kind of help you formulate your plan and your strategy, mm -hmm. right? now, like, to your point, right, on where you want to go and how you want to get there. Yeah. And just be relentless with it. Yeah. Um, so I just want to say thank you so much. I'm so humbled, with all three of you. Thank you. Um, thank you. To have your presence and your, your awesomeness and your femaleness, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. all right here. Um, if anybody needs to know who these ladies are, I'm going to have you state your name and your handles and where to find you one last time before we sign off. Amber, let's start with you. Uh, I am with 5050 Restaurant Group and my handle is Lakecaster A, so follow me on Instagram. And yeah, that's it. I'm Trang Trang, Trang of My Chef's Network. Oh, I'm Trang. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, okay, got it. My name is Train Tran of My Chef's Network. My handle is mychefsnetwork.com. Fantastic. I'm Stacy Poon Kinney, and you can find me all over the Webernet um, <laughs> at SPK Cooks, so SPK Cooks, and or uh, at the Trails Eatery. Awesome. Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Bye bye. Thanks, guys. Yes. <laughs>